We visited Governor Doug Ducey at his office in the executive tower of the state capitol for a discussion that included the increasing concern over Central American migrants seeking asylum in the U.S. and the governor's thoughts on budget negotiations with the legislature. Here is our conversation. Governor, good to see you again. Thank good you so much you. for joining us. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming to the office. You betcha. Um, let's start with what's happening down in Yuma. Uh, they say it's an emergency down there. They can't handle the migrants. What can you as governor do to help this situation? Well, this is a crisis at the border. I'm in communication with the, the mayor of Yuma, and there's things that our state agencies can do to help with the situation. Ultimately, this is a federal issue, and Congress needs to act, but our Department of Emergency Management is working with the mayor, and when we have specifics, we'll be able to act and be as helpful as we can. How soon do you expect those specifics? Well, that's up to the mayor. Uh, he's declared the emergency. He's going to follow on with how we can specifically be helpful. Um, t I was asked this morning by local media, do you think we should declare a state emergency? And typically you declare a state emergency when there's a natural disaster. Well, this is not a natural disaster. This is a congressional disaster, and Congress needs to act. You've mentioned that numerous times. Congress needs to do something. What does Congress specifically need to do? Act Yes, but act how? There's a number of things that Congress can do. I think the most impactful would be to, to uh, change and adjust the laws to the same types of laws that we have with the situation with Mexico, where people can be returned to their country of origin immediately rather than coming into the country and going through the court system. We've got a, an influx of migrants. We also have a humanitarian and a security crisis at the border, but we have asylum laws that are actually incenting people, not from Mexico, but from Central America and South America, specifically Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, to make this very dangerous journey. Because if they can get across the border, they can come, whether they're in search of asylum uh, in good faith or not, they can come into the country. We've changed those laws so that we have a better relationship with Mexico and have affected that part of our immigration. Those two fixes would make a huge difference. Okay, changing the asylum laws then, first and foremost, as far as you're we, concerned. We want people that are in need of asylum, of course, to be able to seek asylum. We don't want to have laws that incent people that want to skip the immigration line to be able to leapfrog into our country. Another branch of the federal government certainly has some specific ideas on how to handle the situation. The president says close the border. He threatened to close the border a couple of weeks ago. He's now extended that to a one-year deadline. You originally expressed some uh, skepticism regarding closing the border. Then you said, you said. Well, let's. let's what, 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 okay, people think. Here's what. Here's the impression because of gave. because of how people reported. People think. But let's be uh, let's be accurate here. Mm -hmm. I've been consistent the entire time. I do not want to see the border closed. As the governor of Arizona, our number one trading partner is Mexico. But there is a crisis at the border, and I am going to be supportive of the commander in chief. When it comes to national security, I'm going to uh, prioritize public safety above avocados. So if it's possible that we don't need to show order, I would prefer that. But of course, the Department of Defense, the commander in chief has a better view as to what's happening at the border than just the border governor. I know what's happening in Arizona. I know that it's a, a crisis and it's become an emergency. That's why I continue to call on Congress to act. Right. But the president needs to do what's in the best interest of the nation. And as, as, as governor, I'm going to be supportive. So you will support him if he says close the border, which he did a couple of weeks ago and then rescinded it instead of we're going to wait another I had a visit with the president. And what did he the border, Does it change your mind on I this? had a visit with the president inside the Oval Office, and the borders remained open. I'm happy that it's open. I want Congress to act to fix the very real crisis on the border. Did you change the president's mind? I had a conversation with the president. He listened to my concerns. I'm grateful. The president also has an idea regarding sending some of these migrants to quote unquote sanctuary cities. What do you think of that idea? Well, right now, Arizona has more than its fair share of the burden and, and responsibility. And we've embraced the responsibility. Cities like Phoenix and Tucson and Yuma are at the breaking point, along with our nonprofits and, and, and our churches. Uh, El Paso, Texas is actually moving migrants from El Paso 
to Phoenix. So why shouldn't other cities and states participate in this responsibility? This is why ultimately it's a congressional issue. But to, to say to other places around the nation, you're going to help as well, I don't think anything's wrong with that at all, Ted. So, so if the president says we're going to transfer some of these people to, to Tucson, you would say... Well, the, well, these people are already in Tucson. Okay, but these people. But if wait, the president wait, says but, that, but, you but you're that's a um, you are mischaracterizing what the crisis is. Tucson is already doing more. I think it's a hundred and thirty-seven percent mm -hmm. of capacity. So, where where could that thirty-seven percent go elsewhere in the United States that could be helpful to to, to this cause? So that that's already happening. As, as a border state, of course, this affects us, but. People are already going to sponsor families and patron families outside of Arizona and border states to places like Vir Virginia and, uh, and Iowa and in the Midwest. So uh, other places can help as well. All right. Other places, not Arizona. No, Arizona is helping, no, Ted. I'm, no, I'm, no, Ted, Arizona I'm, is helping. We are... Um, uh, you see what's happening in Yuma and Phoenix and Tucson. I didn't say not Arizona. I said other states, mm -hmm. other cities can help. Okay. I'm Let's just, be accurate on this. Well, I know. I'm just trying okay. to... Okay. The I, media seems to... somewhat surprised that there's a crisis at the border. Uh, I'm glad that they've caught up. This has been going on for some time. It would be helpful if there was accurate reporting on it, because then maybe Congress would feel the pressure to act rather than play political games. It hurts states like Arizona more than other states because of our position on the border. Last question on this. Do you think the president's ideas of closing the border, of sending migrants to different cities around the country, maybe not Arizona, but other cities around the country, is that a good way to deal with this issue? I'm supportive of the president's priority on border security. That's what I want to see happen. That's what the president wants to see happen. The missing equation here is Congress. All right. Let's get closer to home. The budget. That seems to be missing these days. How long are you willing to wait for a budget to come through? Well, the, the budget's not missing. I mean, we've presented our budget in mid-January. Uh, we're ready to sign the budget today. That's up to the legislative process. Of course, you want to have all the debate and conversation that's necessary, and we're going to do that. Ted, we're in such a different position today than we were four years ago. We had a $1 billion deficit four years ago. Today, we've got the largest surplus in a decade. Uh, in, in Arizona, uh, at the conclusion of this legislative session, I fully expect us to have a $1 billion balance in our rainy day fund. So we've got some dollars available. We've got priorities like completing the teacher pay raises, more money into K-12 education. We want to get the Department of Public Safety, the brave men and women in uniform, our state troopers a raise, correctional officers a raise. But we're not going on a spending spree. And there's some people down there that have a, a, a broader spending agenda th than, than what I have. But we're going to have the discussion and we're going to come to conclusion. And we'll come to conclusion in due time. You know, the governor's office doesn't sign any die. Right. We're here 365 days a year. There's nothing like summer in the Valley of the Sun. So, uh, but if, if, if they want to go home sooner, I'm all for it. Senate President says she's willing to work with Democrats. You willing to work with Democrats? I work with Democrats every day. I work with Democrats and Republicans. 92% of the legislation that I signed last Regarding year Regarding the budget. was bipartisan. Regarding the budget. Listen, Ted, what I want is the budget that I presented. Now, as governor, I'm the chief executive. Of course, I've got to work with both chambers and both parties. But I've been very clear on what the priorities that I have, and I'm thrilled that we've been able to pass the drought contingency plan. I'm thrilled that we have universal recognition of occupational licensing. I want to see a safe Arizona uh, schools plan. I want to see us deal with distracted driving. I want to see us put the the right amount of dollars into the rainy day fund, but other people have other priorities, and, and I'm listening, but I'm also advocating for what I talked about in the, in the state of the uh, state speech. Your relationship with the legislature, how do you think it is? What, what, how do you think you get along with lawmakers this, I get along this, with this particular them. session? Oh, I think I have a good relationship with the legislature, good relationship with legislative leadership. We could have never gotten a uh, uh, drought contingency plan mm -hmm. done without both Republicans and Democrats to, to make that happen. The occupational 
Sing Universal Recognition, which is a generational first state in the nation to do it, was done in a bipartisan fashion. So I, uh, I value uh, the relationship I have with the legislature. It seems like loggerheads, though, with tax conformity and with the vehicle registration uh, fee slash tax. Everyone's got a different word for it. I know it's a fee for you. I have lawmakers telling me it's a tax. Uh, is that, are those things going to get settled? Well, the, the lawmakers that pass the fee and send it up to me, um, we're going to we're going to settle on all that. Part of this, of course, uh, April fifteenth has come and gone. Uh, the state's going to conform. People that filed their taxes early have received their refunds early. Uh, the proper documents are at the Department of Revenue to. Uh, for exactly these types of, of situations. But this is all part of the budget discussion. These are money bills. I don't sign money bills outside of the budget. That's the prerogative of the chief executive. We've had successful budgets in the past, and we'll have a successful budget this session, I'm, I'm confident. That $1 billion rainy day fund, is that hard and firm? I want to see a billion dollar balance in the rainy day fund, and I want to tell you why. It's not that long ago, and we should all remember 2008 and 2009, when this state was turned upside down with a $3 billion deficit. There was Janet Napolitano pulled a ripcord, went back to Washington, D.C. to work with Barack Obama, and left Governor Brewer holding the bag. We're now in a position in a growing economy that is booming with excess surplus dollars. We should make sure that we have dollars in our savings account while we're putting more money into K-12 education, while we're completing teacher pay raises. So when the economy slows, if it slows, but we know that that will be unexpected and we also know it's inevitable. I'm hopeful it won't happen this year. I hope it doesn't happen for the next four years, but it would be irresponsible for the governor to not uh, put the proper balance inside that rainy day fund so that we never experience what we experienced in 2009. You mentioned Governor Napolitano leaving for Homeland Security. Could another Arizona governor be interested in Homeland Security? No current uh, Arizona governor. Uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in this office. I ran for this office. This is the office I asked the voters to entrust me with. I've got 1,355 days left till January 2nd, 2023, and I intend to work hard every single day. Last question, and again, it's, it's great seeing you again. It's good speaking with you. Um, the immigration issue. Uh, it sounds as though you believe it's not being reported accurately, and it sounds as if you believe that the president's positions aren't being reported accurately. What are we missing? Because what we're seeing is a president saying X, Y, and Z. Are you saying X, Y, and Z are not necessarily the case, that he doesn't want to send migrants to, to uh, sanctuary, quote-unquote sanctuary, that he doesn't want to close the border? I, I don't. I, I understand I, I, you're, 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 you were. You got. I understand that you were interested in this and wanted to emphasize your points. But I mean, you have a lot of people out there wondering what in the world was the governor doing, siding with the president regarding closing the border. Listen, I've been consistent the entire time on this. I said I don't want the border closed. I wish the reporting would be accurate on this. There is a crisis at the border now. Uh, the media understands that and they're reporting on it. And I'm grateful. I went down with the vice president and Dana Bash from CNN and I saw her report. Those, those reports were a month late. The reports of the crisis at the border were at least a month late in terms of what's happening. We had 66,273 people come across the border in February of 2019. On March 25th of, of, of this year, we had 3,700 people. That's a, that's a record number to come across the border and one day 70,000 without documentation in, in March, Ted. Th th those are facts, yes. and those are things that sh could have been reported. Now they're being reported, and now it's time for Congress to act. And this is my last question. The people that you work with regarding Mexico, you have a great relationship yes, with Mexico. Yes, The state has a great relationship with Mexico. How are they handling all of this, this back and forth, this reporting, misreporting, if, if we so choose? But, the f I mean, our relationship with Mexico is important. Even the slightest hint of closing the border cannot be a good thing for that relationship. We have a great relationship with Mexico. I have a great relationship with Mexico, not only Claudia Pavlovich, but the new federal government. I value that relationship very much. Mexico has been helpful to keeping the border open. Like I said, this is a, this is a South American and Central American crisis, and, and, and Mexico has stepped up and, and helped on this. 
I'm hopeful they'll be part of the solution. It's important to both our economies. But as a border governor and as an American, I'm concerned about national security in the United States. Are you encouraged something will get done? I uh, have been continually disappointed by the United States Congress. Uh, but with citizen engagement uh, and proper pressure, something should get done. All right. Something's going to get done one way or another. There's an easy way to handle this, and there's a much more difficult way to handle this. Uh, it, the citizens are now watching and engaged, and I think they'll have the same expectation of the United States Congress. Governor Doug Ducey, always a pleasure. Good to see you again. Thank you, Ted. Thank you.